check, check, check. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Yeah, uh, the uh, Boombas be clotting. Out of your yeah. peeking, bro. Dude. Uh, folks, it's the Producer Lounge. We're back. It's Tuesday. Welcome back. Here it's we Tuesday. Are. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Folks, this is your weekly music production broadcast. Welcome back. If you're new here, we're going to talk about music, music production. That's all you need to know. Uh, it's episode 180. We're moving out of drum and bass speed and into Damn. gabber. Into Whoa. gabber. Here we go. Into straight up gabber speed, Woo. baby. Are we going to huff get hot. nitrous in a UK of garage and, and fish out yes. on gabba? Son. Do you have some galaxy gas? Dude, can cherry you, you flavored. Like yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> it would be fun if we were being transported into a garage right now and, <laughs> right. and we're just like, yeah. Dude, that's what we're doing after <laughs> the pod, dude. Dude, I love oh balloons. Oh, my God. Oh Let's my wrap God. ourselves in rugs and get dirty. Ice cold, bruh. Um, <laughs> folks, we got some tomato on the pod today. Let's go. Tomato. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, no. Tomato, tomato. But they're slow. Uh, I, I'm autistic. Well, you got a new patch today. Like I said. That's cool. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but autism got a new patch today. Oh patch 10.2. We're actually doing that, babe. Congrats um, to you guys. <laughs> long time waited. Would it be Fidelity Shound? Yep. <laughs> Widowy. Widowy. So, Widowy, the sickest patch. Oh, my God. Widowy sounds oh my God. so good. And <laughs> canceled. <laughs> Folks, all in good fun, all in what good great love. Way to sp- start the pod today. Yep. Wait, Supporting who the fuck our local... is that? What? That? It's probably or... John. That's Rogue. Who is Rogue? He's my homie. What's up, oh, yeah, Rogue? Rogue, yeah, yeah. Rogue. Yeah. Repping he's, the 400 he's, game. He's, he's, he's been right. in, in here before. Let's go. What's up, Playboy? We're pimping uh, apparently. He didn't have the 400 before, chance. though, right? No, he, he switched it to, to, to that because he's a boss. I like it. he's a boss. He's a boss. Um, oh, yeah. Folks, welcome back. Totally not. Here we are. Oh, I need the, the uh, stream right now. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> I need to get us on the stream channel here. Hell yeah. Well, uh, how's everyone? How's everybody's studio time been recently? Hmm. Pretty good. Uh, I didn't make music for like three months. I hear that. Four months. Actually. That happens. Yeah. That's okay. It's the longest I've gone without writing music, or Damn. at least touching Ableton. You're basically back at like square one, dude. Yeah, yeah you, you don't have remember to restart. Have to restart. Dude, it, it, no, for real. Like I got a new house and moved in, and all the bullshit that includes of building a new studio is tedious. Yep. So, yeah, that's. But it's also so much fun. It is. It's I'm yeah. so much fun. basically like it's a good break. Basically, yeah. I feel like I'm going back to fundamentals, which is kind of cool. Actually, it's kind of a good refresher. Yeah, sometimes it's good to take those breaks. Like I'll usually take a break once a year for at least nine months, two weeks. Oh yeah, <laughs> nine months. once a year. That most of the year actually. Uh, sometimes I make music. It checks out. Um, fitness. I don't care about fitness. I'm trying to share this motherfucking Twitch link. Uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, you tell that phone. Yeah. What the fuck? Um, but yeah. no, yeah. Uh, uh, the breaks are good, especially if they're like longer than a week. Like you really like kind of take a step back. And then when you come back, yeah, you are kind of just thinking fundamental wise about mm. things. Your ears are like super hyper fresh. It kind of takes a second to like get back in the saddle, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, a, it's, been a, it's been a ride. I feel like every time I come on a podcast, I'm like just... Getting out of a bunch of bullshit, and then you guys hit me up at like the perfect time, being like, "Hey, come on the pod." Hey. I'm like, "Oh, let's go." Synchronicity, boy. Yeah. Perfect. String theory, dude. It yeah, does. We practice string theory. Over it here. doesn't exist, we actually. Unfortunately, Montum Canics, dude. Right. Yeah. Widowy. Widowy new autistic patch just dropped. <laughs> it did. It did, guys. He's not kidding. Um. <laughs> I fucking fe- felt it. I'm, you know, I'm only 20% autistic, but I f- felt that patch. Did you say fentanyl? I'm just kidding. I did. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> thanks for catching that. <laughs> what do we, thanks for catching that. What do we, thank you for guys for having me on the oh podcast. Of course. Hey, I'm really having the biggest oh time God. ever. I'm having a great time. Hey, after this, you want to see my Womoko action? I, I would really do, if, unless, uh, unless I can show you my Wobox collection. Oh, oh, let's go. I just started a Minecraft sofa. You oh. guys want to play? Yes. I don't, I, of course. I, I don't have any. Enough guys. money for my mom's allowance to do oh, that. Oh, what do we? 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> We get back you guys should have not here. given me booze before going on the podcast. I know. It's, it's going to be one of those episodes, right? You gave yourself booze. Um, I, I, mean, it's I just, did. It's I just, did give myself booze. You it'll, did. It'll just go extra long. He it's literally, fine. he hit me up on Instagram and was like, bitch, you better have some seltzers at the ready. Hey, I also said oh my God. any other alcoholic That's beverage. So yeah, he did, he did say that. He did. He was, it was somewhat polite. He was open. Yeah. Speaking of aggressive. Yeah. Dope step? Um, dope step? Correct. Uh, you make some pretty aggressive bass sounds. I tend to tend to do that. Yeah. Um, some of them pretty <laughs> neuroy. Um, not neuro, but neuroy. You know, they're kind of mm. evolving. Speaking of, I always go ahead. Uh, the whole thing of neuro, I'm always fascinated by because, like, what is like? Do you guys like? Okay, just to be upfront with the audience and you mm. guys, mm. I don't even know what my music classifies as, which I'm sure mm. tons of other people sure. feel sure. that way. But yeah, like, yeah, I understand that. But like with all the labels and- I mean, the, I would just call you halftime. That's like- some, some see, genre I wouldn't, of halftime. Because that, like- that's, 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 I agree with Austin. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know what the fuck halftime actually is. It like, started as halftime drum and bass. Yeah. But so then it that like- really? T- tempo, yeah. Yeah, because I've heard okay. the- the label tossed around like new school breaks, but I don't Weird. consider Weird. my music breaky though. And no. Have you guys ever seen Break oh, is way too broad. Speaking mm-hmm. of something cool though, um Will Schmoop, uh speaking of weird labels. Shout out. Shout out Shout out, shout out Schmoop Will. Um he has a really cool website he showed me a while ago. I don't remember what it's called. It's called Ishtar's uh labels and genres, but it's a website. The UI is crazy too. It's like a giant map of like it's basically like a graph and a timeline of yeah, like yeah. every genre of electronic music that exists. Oh, I know this. But it's crazy. can we uh, can we pull it up actually? <sighs> that's it. That's and it's Dave kinda... has left the room. Dave's like genres. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave Dave doesn't see genres, dude. <laughs> he, dude he's, he's transcended. Gen- he's genre fluid. That's what happens when you're an uh, an ascended master. You just you just bail. It's called Ishtar uh, map, but. It's really crazy though. It basically like Ishtar gender. Ishtar's guide to electronic music. There you go. Yeah, Ishkurs. Okay, so I was oh, wrong. Ishkur. Ish, Ishkur. Okay, Ishkurs. but it's basically oh this one. So it's really cool. It basically like gives you a breakdown of I don't know who made it, but it gives you like a breakdown of like the entire timeline of all electronic music from like oh my all, god you can't all, scroll up or down. Yeah, you can't scroll up or down. It's all zoom in. And it's a very weird UI. But if you go into it and zoom in, so it looks like a bunch of lines on the screen. But when you actually zoom in and go in, there will be timeline breaks. Mm -hmm. So, like, they all, and they all branch. Mm. But yeah, they'll give you, like, examples. It's funny. Tipper has. Oh, yes. So it'll give you, like,. Wait, what about Tipper? He has does he have his own little spot? Yeah, he has so Does he? Yeah, he has a weird little spot. I don't remember where it's oh, at. I think amazing. it's in the new school section, but new but school yeah, breaks. But it's cool though, speaking of labels and genres, like if you ha- need help like figuring out uh like even if you don't know music theory or like know what you're trying to make, this website's dope because it gives you a whole timeline of history of like where everything came from like if you want to know the roots of where dubstep uh branch from or like anything really it's specific yeah. i want to be specific it's electronic music only it's not going to do mm. like any other music it's just anything that goes <clears throat> beep boop yep um, yeah. <laughs> but it gives you an entire freaking map of like everything that's ever existed yeah this is great granted for the kind of music that a lot of the audience and like the people in this room that make i wouldn't say it's a hundred percent accurate, but if you yeah. want to see at least like a historical timeline of what everything branched into, it shows everything. Like, and I'm and sure I mean it's everything. like everything. It's got to be like relatively there. I like, I would yeah I would say it's relatively yeah, but like there. The, right? the yeah. idea of garage happening in 1978 is wild to me. Well, that's the thing. Like garage back in 1970 might not even be what the garage we know now. Right, it could be like true. fucking. I don't even know. It, yeah. The only way to find out is you click on the blocks and it shows you. And, and it does play some pretty god awful fucking sample songs mm, that you're like, sure. yeah, that's terrible. But it's cool though, just to like see. Of course, like, you click that one. Course, yeah, for all dude. the viewers out there that uh, if you're struggling to see, like, I, I guess if you care about labeling your music or at least like kind of figuring out if you want to like have a more vocabulistic 
uh, expertise in what you're making, or at least like get an idea of like what other people are making, this website's dope. And Dude, shout fuck out Will yeah. again. So he show me this. I like this one too. Um, because we know a similar one, and I can't think of the name. It's like World Music G- Genre Genome Map something. Um, and it includes electronic and like other genres as well, but it doesn't give like a preview. Oh yeah. Well, the thing that sucks, the only thing I, the, my only gripe with this website is that the the examples it gives, because I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this website is open source. Don't hold me to that because oh. I actually don't know. Okay. But from what I know, it's pretty open source. People just kind of add to it, you know. Right. And they just like feel it out. I mean, as long as you don't get some fucking troll ass right motherfuckers here. in there, like people, there's gonna be some nerds out there who are like, oh, I got this. Give me yeah, all of this blue section and I will load it up. A hundred percent. And it's got fucking everything. But the thing Dude, that sucks is crazy. you're not gonna see anything of like modern day like oh what we do like you're not like what, what so does the timeline cut it like 2010 We're type thing to, or no uh, the only way to ebm know. ebm ebm this is this is somebody's electronic curation booty. correct Elec- like yeah, somebody just yeah, made this somebody's what? interpretation yes, someone of it. made this so and that, that, this isn't like ai did a thing nope, or something yeah, like this that was, this is just like somebody made this so it's or, someone's opinion basically I would, or like to a some team degree of people Loaded question. I think it's that's what I mean by it might be open it's not source. facts. Because if someone put this all together, speculation over here. So yeah, I'm very very speculatory on this website, but same. Um, but, I trust it fully. I don't know. What you <laughs> but, it, but I will say it's an awesome reference point. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I would say it's a good reference. I it's wouldn't. Incredible that someone pulled off. That. Yeah, like what yeah. the fuck is Jazz Step? Like, oh, they have Neurofunk. And that better my, be Cohen and, Sound. And like, who all? Shout out my homies making micro funk. Yeah, the fuck I saw that. that. I saw that micro funk. Yeah, drum step I'm familiar with, but that's not even around anymore. But yeah, right. Which is funny. Pendulum's on there. Knife part. If yeah. anyone who didn't know, knife party came from Pendulum, which yep. is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. And it and Pendulum is five dudes, which I like how they're their Pendulum. own five genre. Dudes, one mixer. <laughs> pendulum. It's just Pendulum is Pendulum. They are their own genre. Yeah. yeah. yeah they, they're just their own thing. What is uh, Caleb? What is all the way on it's the left? Baller choice on the curator's part. Oh, this is the this is the shit right here. Atmospheric jungle sounds like it's the, the vibe. It's Ooh. the best vibe ever, dude. Dude, this is like when you're in the doctor's office waiting for like a crazy <laughs> result on something, and this is playing in the background, or you're playing Sonic. <laughs> it's only two of those options. It's nothing else. 96 was the best year though. 96. Doctor's was office year. type beat. Just Fotech all day. PlayStation 1 menu. Oh, game. yes. Yeah. yeah. PS1 Jungle. I uh. listen one. I listen to that shit way too much. I know. There's, you're obsessed. It's like unhealthy. Yeah, it's bad. I don't think there's any kind of unhealthy amount of listening to dope music. Well, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Ghetto Tech, Techno, techno bass, bass, Miami, Miami Bass. bass. Oh, 18, yeah, 19, 1986, this. like fucking crazy. But yeah, I it's know. a whole timeline, or at least a somewhat current timeline. Obviously, like uh, the state of electronic oh, music oh, changes faster than other genres. It feels like I don't, I don't know, but that website's cool though. If you want like a reference point for like if you're looking for something like old school or anything right. weird, yeah, so sick. Well, you make some Nero style sounds. Yes. Oh, yeah. And God by neuro, I mean just evolving bass sounds yes, that have like much. formants and other kind of elements to them. They might not involve actual formants, like a formant f- filter, but it has formantiness, like a bunch of filtering Absolutely. happening. Yes. Um, walk us through a, a, a basic, h- how you would start yeah, what does that process look like? sound designing one of those. Like you just make a mud pie and you find the good parts or... So- kind of funny i've over the years i've changed that process a lot like love to hear it so for a long time i when i first started i just did sampling so i would just like download sample packs from like my favorite artists if they had one um and then a lot of it would just be like searching around like the website it's funny a lot of people like hold splice to such like a high pedestal but way before splice came i was just like going on like subreddits and finding like oh yeah to like oh yeah. yeah like Oh, here, go, like, for example, like, one of the biggest websites Here's I like used... Here's, like, a gig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the biggest websites I actually used uh, in the beginning was called Sample Swap, and that website's cool because everything's free, but the catch is if you want to download anything off there, you have to add something. So if you want to download, like, 
say, 500 megabytes of samples, you have to add yeah. 500 megabytes of your own samples. I think recently they just changed it to now it's like royalty free. So now you don't have to add anything if you want to use it. But that was a big website I used a lot back in the day for. I still occasionally visit it. Hell yeah. You're also limited to like how much you can download uh, if you want. But that was like the beginning. And then mm -hmm. eventually, once I started like learning with a bunch of people in uh, tutorials, I started just doing stock Ableton stuff. So in the beginning, absolute, that was sampling. And then once I figured out how to do stuff, I started with Operator. Mm -hmm. And to this day, Operator and Ableton is still like my number one synth. I've I know heard so many people sick. say that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are kind of moving over to like Faceplant or they're moving away from Serum. A lot of people are really like Vital. Vital's really cool. Yeah. People um, are, are just bored of Serum now. It's been out for what? 14 years now? Long time. Yeah, yeah, a long time. It was one of the first VSTs I ever bought. Or same, I, didn't even buy, I didn't even buy it. I financed it. And yeah. It took like a year to finance it. And yeah, then by same. the time I owned it, I was like, wow, I own my own VST. That's crazy. <laughs> it's I'm my first pro. one. I didn't crack it. Whoa. But, uh, but I learned predominantly on Operator, specifically to Ableton. And then, um, so yeah, I would, like Caleb was saying, I would do like super big mud pie, uh, mm. just... Just like a just fucking crazy distorted mud pie, and I would kind of pick and choose, and then convert to audio, and then do everything to like make it shape it into something usable. But then once I started learning how to be more precise with the sound design I wanted to do, I started figuring out like, oh, okay, if I do this, this is how a respace is made. If I make this, this gets like a square wave kind of saw. Um, and then from there, I started like listening to all my favorite artists, and I'd be like, okay, like. That bass is obviously like a sine wave. Okay, this one sounds like a triangle wave because it has that certain like mm -hmm. finite tone tone to it. And then, but then uh, obviously, uh, if you make neuro, most people know it's square wave. Square wave is literally like the foundation <laughs> most for most people. Know most people know. And that's anyone I'm that makes. Right. I didn't. Um, I don't make a lot of neuro sounds, so. Oh, okay. That's, I, that's, that's square, square wave I'm, is I'm the move, though. I'm, I'm assuming too much, but yeah, square oh, you're wave. Good. You're good. Square wave is like the main foundation. If you want something really overly distorted, but doesn't compromise like the white noise aspect and all the, like the distortion, square wave like lets you move around the wave. I guess a little better. There's mm -hmm. a lot. It's a lot of processing, but so yeah. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, I started doing multi layers operator. Um, there's a selection, or sorry, not selection. There's a you can group channels in Ableton. And then what I started doing was I used to just make operator and then that was the chain. That was it. But then I figured out, oh, you can multi-layer things in Ableton by grouping them. Um, so basically what I started doing and what I still do now is if I want to make like a super sick bass noise, I start with operator and then I'll duplicate it three times in a chain. Mm -hmm. And then usually there's three layers. The top one will be, I just literally named top, or I top and Heimer, as yep. I'm a fucking nice. new gen. Top and Heimer. <laughs> uh, Let's go. The mid, the mid chain would then be your bass. The that would be like your sub bass. And also tying into that, I started figuring out a long time ago, I used to sample and have to match a sub underneath it because there's like a lot of fundamental layers to making neuro bass, which is, I think, really painful for a lot of people because like, if you make 140 and you make like a dubstep, it's just like a sine wave with like a little bit of processing and like that stuff, but it's just a wub. So it's really just a sub. And then you're just right. like saturating all that. But when you make a mm -hmm. neuro noise with that evolving sound, you have to have uh, some kind of layering system to it. And that's why a lot of people move to faceplant because faceplant is not limited by the amount of oscillators that you can right, have in right. it. So you can create all the layers you want. Whereas Serum and Operator, Operator's four. But the way Opera is laid out, it only looks like one sine wave is playing, but you can set it up to play more than one, obviously. Hmm. But um, I never liked using four and one uh, chain, like four oscillators in the one, because if you're layering multiple operators, you start getting like weird artifacts that if you're like boosting volume and like places where it shouldn't be, you start getting like that shitty mud sound, mm. like that really yeah. weird, like. It just doesn't sound good. It's, it, like, it's gross. Anyone who makes music knows what that sound sounds like when you're trying to make mm -hmm. a bass, and it sounds just ass. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to describe. Yeah, you think it's like clipping something, or so like for, is it like a volume thing? So from my experience, I've noticed it's like a little bit of everything. So like I've noticed that if 
I always forgot too that when you change decibel range on Ableton or any DAW, the decibel range also affects the the frequency that's basically oscillating. So like say the top end of that operator patch is set to like 16 decibels, it will changing the volume of that one top will change the outcome of what it's layering to the sub. Mm. Oh, I forgot to add the third layer of the operator chain. I was, I was gonna ask, yeah. The third layer is white noise. Okay. You want a little bit of noise to fill in the gaps because if you're just doing a sub yeah. in the top part, you're getting a sound, but there's also gaps in it that like fuck, what's it called? It's like the it's basically like it's dithering. Dithering and then also white noise helps fill in the space. So it's not like audible. It's more of like a sensation. So the right. white noise mm. helps fill in the sensation part. Okay. So you could have a full sound coming out, but if the white noise isn't like tuned or like in a certain way, you, you're not getting like the full oomph. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time explaining because there's so many steps to like how I make a bass noise in all my tracks because they're all different. I also have a weird motto where like I refuse to do the same thing over. Like I will never. That's, yeah, that's right. a good motto. Yeah. It, it can be so annoying having that motto, but I, I'd say for the most part, that's good. There's pros and cons to it. Like cons is like mm -hmm. if you do it different every time, then you're constantly having to like reinvent your sound, which is a good thing. But at the same time, like if you're having like a really hard week or like hard months or even years and you're trying to reinvent it every fucking time you open Ableton, then you're not going to want to make music. It just sucks. Like, you know, just yeah. having to try something yeah. new every time you want to like be. I think that's like the biggest struggle making music is people want to just get the end result. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, it's just a lot of practice and just a lot of, like, flexing your brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I've come, living by that motto has cost me pretty dearly, but at the same, same time, I've learned a oh, lot of shit yeah. doing that. So it depends on, like, what your motive is. Like, if you want to just shit out a bunch of music really quickly, then stick to your box method. But if you really want to, like, elevate all the stuff you're doing, never do the same thing once. Like, or, sorry, never do the same thing, like, every Three time. Three times. Maybe four times, maybe yeah. even ten yeah. times. Yeah. You know, but you... I, I definitely uh, agree with that. I like don't I save some presets, um, but I really just make everything bespoke every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've I've just found better results doing it that way because then you're not limited to like, oh, I'm gonna I want this track. I'm gonna make this and do that. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're constantly like doing everything different, I think that's why I like never really taught because I've had a lot of like messages from people being like, Hey, you should give me music lessons. How do you, how did you make this one bass? It's like, dude, I couldn't tell you because like <laughs> that one patch I made in a song in 2018, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, mm -hmm. and even the song I'd made last year, I couldn't tell you how I made that bass because I, it was just all like trial and error to like get that result. And then yeah. I finite it and then just concreted it into the song, like bricked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, fucking brick that shit. Yeah, brick bricked that shit, dude. Bricked up. <laughs> You're not bricked. bricked up in the studio. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, he said it. <laughs> Sometimes I go up. back and listen to those basses, and you're like, I wish I knew what I did there. Oh, hundred all the time. Because I'm like nailing something in a special way, like that has stood the test of time yeah. for my fucking dude, manipulative that, brain. Dude, mm -hmm. that very thought haunts me because I made one of my <laughs> one of my most popular songs in my SoundCloud. I made that tune with like no thoughts, like literally no thoughts. Like I was just doing it cuz you know, you make a song and you're just kind of going through your normal routine of like, oh yeah, this is cool. That's cool. And then yeah. all of a sudden it has 50,000 plays and you're like, "Oh, I got to recreate that." And then you can't. And then you're like, right. "Fuck." Yeah. Like I kind of know how I did that, but no. The, the same, way you recreate it is yeah. you just get in that same vibe, which I didn't know what the vibe was at the time. That's that's well, like the vibe the, is not th thinking. Not thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you true. just fucking do do that again. The muse. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Kenny the, Beats always says that on his uh, YouTube channel. Don't overthink um, shit. Don't overthink. Yeah, exactly. Dude, that's it's so true. It's like it's so as much as you yeah. want to deny, if you the more you overthink it, the more convoluted your music feels. Yeah. Or at least even if it's not, you will feel that way to a degree. My uh my motto the past like year and a half has been follow the excitement. And I feel like I'm like it's like the code for just tapping into like flow state and creativity and that shit. When you can get out of your head and out of the like 
oh, I need to get numbers. I need to sound a specific way. I need to like blah, 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 whatever yeah, thing. fuck all that. Fuck all that. If you can just say, I'm excited about this. Oh, this is weird. I'm going to follow that. Let's keep rolling with this thing. Right. I'm excited about this tempo. I'm excited about this genre. Like follow the excitement. Yeah. Because that's, that. I don't know. There's like that purity that comes out where you're just genuinely excited. And that's where the magic happens. I think the magic happens too, like when you hit a certain sweet spot with your music surround yourself with people who also fuck with it and also mm. kind of do the same thing because like more likely than not like they're feeling the same way so like if you're mm-hmm. able to tune into that to like mass then like you're probably gonna learn something new yeah or 100%. not it's it's just whatever it's you have a choice at the end of the day to decide on those things and that's something that i'm slowly uh slipping back into that like i have a choice and like what i want to do with sure. my music and all that stuff mm the do the having the choice thing always i i think about that a lot i okay so i think about death a lot i do too <laughs> do you i do i do think about death a lot yeah but not like in the sense that like oh i'm gonna get old and die one day it's just like the fact that like it just inherently like exists mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like i think about all the time like what if death didn't exist like how many people would be on earth how many animals how many, like, <laughs> mm. like it's that's a fun way to think how, about how long would you like create that? music till you just so got bored. Yeah, like could you imagine a timeline where you were, like could you imagine a timeline like if no one died could you imagine being born and being like george mm. washington's still alive or still some alive. shit and you're like what the cleopatra fuck? she's chilling yeah, like yeah, she lives the, down the street yeah like all oh, the so overpopulated she smokes so much weed it's crazy yeah cleopatra is now just a fucking deadbeat dude. you'd be fucking... trying to overthrow the fucking government and shit yeah yeah it yeah. would be so corrupt yeah oh right? dude it'd be, it would be or, or it'd corrupt. be so much murder there would be so much murder. No, I think there would have been in like maybe the twelve hundreds or whatever, like a long time. Actually, probably now still there'd be a lot. But I, I feel like if everyone was immortal now, we'd be we'd be at a point where it's like more of like a utopia where everyone's like, why are we doing this? We're all immortal. Like there's everyone no point. Would, everyone would be even more bored. Yeah, than there'd we be are shitloads now. of suicides. So oh, many. you would get so bored, right? Yeah, because yeah. like the idea of like if death didn't exist, but. What if, okay, for example, like, what if humans were like what? jellyfish or vampires? Like, they don't die unless something kills right. them. The immortal right. jellyfish? Dude, that shit is fucked up. Yeah, like, jelly, like whatever <laughs> that jellyfish roll, like... whole another way. <laughs> yeah, no. Dude. Sorry, we're getting off topic now, here. but what if? But oh, what if? Then. But, so the cool part about thinking about death every day is... It keeps you alive. Y- yes. <laughs> but also, it, it makes you very present... When you're making your music, you're like, I am going to die one day and I'm not going to be able to create anymore. Or I'm going to look back on what I created and hopefully I was happy with the process of everything I went through. So I think about that and I'm like, just be happy with your process. Like, do the thing sure. you want to do sure. as an artist. Like, I think, I, I think I've been thinking about death more as I get older only because recently, I don't want to name him just because I love him, but... A dear friend of mine lost both his parents in the same year. Damn. Like, wow. just like that. That like, sucks. Like, within a couple months of each other. And so it had wow. me thinking a lot, like, really anything can happen. Like, mm-hmm. one day your life could be super normal and then, like that, you know? And so I think totally. I, and I kind of started having, like, the epiphany of, like, wow. Like, people are always like, life is fragile and all that stuff. But I didn't really get the gist of that until it, like, actually happened and watched someone sure. really close to me like go through all that and i yeah. i didn't really have those thoughts until i like really like experienced <laughs> it secondhand like from right. my buddy and that was really crazy and so i can't yeah, imagine so yeah, i think about death all the time like just in the sense of like that it could just happen like at any time and so mm-hmm. like with that being said just do what you love do right hang out, yeah hang out with people you fuck with like if you're thinking second guessing about sending that dm to someone like about collabing or whatever just do it just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. You have nothing to lose. You literally have nothing to lose except them saying no. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Um, Unless, speaking of, oh sorry, uh, I was going to say. Speaking of death, um, a little bit of a segue here. Uh, <laughs> how you make your drum so crispy? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> the Grim Reaper slices off the transients. Hey. So. The way I do drums is... Yeah, uh, talk us through some drums, baby. A lot of the drums I do... So kicks I make, I use a VST called Kick 2. Um, Ooh, hey man, brother. Shout out have, have you tried Kick Ninja or Ninja Kick? No, kick Ninja? that sounds sick, though. Dude, it's so sick. You can take <laughs> it. You can take a sick. kick and drop it in, and it'll like recreate it. 
That's cool. It's got way more parameters than Kick Two. Also, Kick Three is about to drop. Kick That's Three. Um, I will definitely yeah. be but on that boat. But I was gonna look. I was looking at Kick Three, and then John showed me Kick Ninja, and it does a couple things that Kick Three doesn't even do. And I was like, "Yo!" And mm-hmm. I think it's only like sixty bucks. Well, that's not bad. I know. Sold. Yeah, it's I know, sick. Right? I'll Sold. Uh, I'll send you a link. But anyways, you make your kicks. Amen, brother. Me too. Um, so I usually a lot of my drums. I usually start. I layer a lot of my snares and drums. So I'll usually start with kick two. Kick two. I don't ever make the initial kick. I usually make the undertone of the sure, kick. Sure. Sure. So like, I'll usually find. That's like one of my weaknesses though. I have a really hard time making my own like very nice kicks, but I can make really Same, nice low dude. tone kicks though. Yeah. So a lot I of can't time, do it. So a lot of time I'll just find kicks from artists that I really like. I'll use that as like a starter point and then I'll kind of work around it. So like if the kick is this certain frequency or whatever, I'll make a kick in kick two to kind of complement it and make it sound a little more oomphy to like what I want mm. it to be. Okay. And then from there, I do what's called a placeholder producing whereas a lot of the stuff i make i will usually find loops and things i like and mm-hmm, then i'll layer it mm-hmm, out mm-hmm. and then once i find an arrangement that's cool i'll start subtracting things that are not me and i'll start substituting them for things i like yeah so like i'll start yep. building rhythms off of that and then from there uh, once i take out everything that was placeholder i'll start substituting like the things that i like or right. things that i make so like i'll find same with the hi-hats Hi-hats, I have a lot of hard time doing arrangement hi-hats, and I use um, Reactor, if anyone's familiar with Reactor at all. Um, Reactor has a lot... Shout out Feel, actually, Phil. Feel, a long time ago, during the pandemic, when we were collabing, he showed me... He was like, hey, do you have Reactor? And I was like, yeah, I don't... I use it for some stuff. And he's like, oh, well, there's a module on there called Limelight. I was like, Mm. what the fuck is Limelight? And it's a generative drum maker that basically will sync up to any tempo that you have it set in the DAW. And it automatically does it. Some some drum machine programs, you have to, like, set it up. Like, uh, Restraint showed me EXO a long time ago. Oh, that plugin is so sick. EXO is cool, but you have to, like, set it up to sync with the DAW when you're using it. Whereas Limelight Mm. and Reactor, it just automatically does it. Mm. And there's like a billion presets in there where it'll just play, it'll just play generative presets of drum samples into an arrangement. So if I have a hard time finding like a riff or like a drum beat, I'll use Reactor as like a reference point. I'll be like, mm-hmm. so I'll open a preset. You can also turn on it sets up like five things. So it's, it's like the kick, snare, usually like a pad, stuff like that. And then you can kind of click out, mute things like you would like a channel. And then I'll find like an arrangement that's cool. And then if I don't like that sound, I'll just replicate it in MIDI underneath the generative patch. And then I'll kind of find my rhythm that way. Mm. Snares are kind of a tricky one for me because I never feel like I use the same snare in any of my tunes. Because I've had a lot of results where like I make find a really good sample and that kind of does it. Or I spend like 70 hours making a snare. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like. There's no in between. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah, there's like no in between. Yeah. It's like sometimes you hit a a really good snare and sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. But typically though, when I find a snare, I find a really good sample and then I'll usually process it with uh, like saturator. A lot of people don't know this, but I learned this off an old. Do you guys are familiar with um like the old to the duo yeah. group? Yeah, um dot dot dot. Yes, yep. mm-hmm. they had a cool video about uh, saturation as a clipper. You can use sure. stock saturator on Ableton as a clipper and. Mm-hmm. You just turn all the settings down really low, but if you turn the the output to a certain decibel or whatever the decibel rating of your snare, you'll get like kind of like a punch. It, instead of distorting it, it almost like boosts it a little bit. Hmm. But it's really finite. I don't recommend it being like a tool. I recommend it as like a if you have a really good snare or like you make one, it's a good way of like inducing the transient of the snare a little better. Okay, which is interesting. Cool. But I actually don't do too much processing. I uh, I have you a just te- try and find the good sample and roll with it. I find a good snare sample, or I'll make one. Um, most times, and I usually find like a good sample that I like because because mm. I I don't know. I came to the conclusion like if I want this specific snare, it probably already exists somewhere. Mm-hmm. So like, why spend? That's like the gray area. It's like mm-hmm. all right, it feels authentic. It, I guess it depends on the person. Like. If you want the satisfaction of making your own snare and you do all that stuff, it feels really good. Good dopamine boost to the brain, you know? 
But at the same time, if you spent 70 hours making this one snare that sounds like another artist, why not just find a sample? You know, like, not saying that samples are bad or anything, but it's like... Right. I, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, if, the, if you're not trying to, like, reinvent the snare, or even, like, kind of do a thing like Jack, you did in 2016, where they, they did, like, the double plank snare, right. yeah. which just hadn't been done. It was, like, a simple concept now, but just no one had done it, and it's like... Unless you're doing that where you're trying to make it like really interesting and tonally different to some degree, like, yeah, just find a fucking snare that sounds exactly like the thing you're trying to make. Why not I will save s- yourself a few hours? It's true. I will say the most integral thing that I love using for all my drums, though, that give it a little bit of punch is uh, Transient Shaper by Kilo Hearts. Dude, I was just, yeah. Transient. Shout out. So Shout goaded, out. right? It's yeah. fucked up. It's just a module inside a face plant, but... All of their modules you can use independently for anyone mm-hmm. that doesn't know that. But Transient Shaper is awesome because it only has three parameters. It's a very small VST. When you open it, it's like three things. Very simple. But you forget about the fourth, which is very the brick very, knob. Very, oh yeah, yeah the, the speed point. knob. The, the speed knob. The speed oh, knob the speed down, makes yeah. and makes and breaks it. How long of a brick do you want? All right. Oh yeah. How long? So, how long do you want? How long do you want that brick? <laughs> But um, transient shaper is essential. Yeah. It's fucked. Yeah, pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually on a kick. Uh, <laughs> it's also harder the drums because it depends on like how aggressive I want it to be. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, sure the transient shaper will usually kind of depict like what the outcome is gonna be. Like if you want a super aggressive drum beat that because I have a couple songs where the drums are kind of soft and I let all the other sure. sounds calm them. Sure. And there's other songs like I have a song called Needle Point where the drums are so fucking hard hitting. Like that's the focal point of the mm-hmm. tune that I want mm-hmm. people to be like like but you don't want them to blink when the snare hits cuz then that sucks like <laughs> unless you're in your plugs. When but. you're on that transient shaper are you using more of the attack or the body? It depends on the mm. what's I your go to. I would say I usually put the attack pretty low and then I there's another mm. parameter the push. It's it called push. I can't remember. Pump. 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 Yeah, the middle of bringing I, it down. That one, so like on a snare, depending on the fidelity of the snare, I'll usually pump it pretty good. Like really? All, yeah. If it's interesting. A, if okay. it's a good snare sample, you can pump the shit out of transient shaper on a good snare. But if mm. it's like a shitty snare, so you're you boosting the tail and bringing good. down the attack. Yeah, a little bit because uh, I mean, oh. no, no, no. If you pump sorry, hard, it's gonna basically pumping. Ink- Pumping, I think, boosts the the mid part. It's like yeah, it, it ducks it. It yeah. ducks oh, okay. the mid. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Which the more you turn the up the pump, the more it like ducks right sure. after the transient, sure. and then you have the sustain knob, which is like the tail. Yeah. The sustain. So I like really dry drums. So the sustain usually stays pretty low, if not zero. Yeah. You would, pump, you would love this dude, Kyoto. I. He <laughs> is allergic to reverb. He is. Yeah. Allergic. yeah. He, he likes using reverb every once in a while. I, <laughs> yeah. I know he likes to use reverb. It's very sandal. He's the one that taught me how to use a reverb tail, so I can't. Yeah. I know he he knows how to mm-hmm. use He does reverb. very mm-hmm. precise reverbing. Mm-hmm. He does. Um, but yeah, for the most part, though, like I think a lot of people... I think that's like kind of where I fall, because I feel like I should be doing more with my drums to make no, them No, I think they, they slap. Yeah. I don't really do much, so I did a lesson with Resling a long time ago. And Ooh. And I remember in the lesson, I was like, hey, I think one of the things I want to learn is like how you do your mix downs. And he literally looked at me and was like, what? It's like, what do you and it, like? It he was actually... like, your mix downs are already sick. Like, wh- no, no, why are you asking? No, he w- doesn't really mix down because there's a template he built in Ableton where it everything goes through a pro L and then everything on the channel. So every channel he has is like a pro Q3, a utility and a glue compressor, all mm-hmm. in that order every time. But basically the way he set it up was every channel goes to negative 12, and then the utility, he po- he boosts it to plus 12. And I don't know mm. 100% the uh, programming language of why, but when you do it that way, it just boosts the fuck out of the snare. So like all of a sudden, this really sloppy sample that you had in there is now hitting like it would on a sound system. And it's hmm. a very simple maneuver you can do to boost, but it's very temperamental because if you have a very distorted snare or anything that's already very loud in amplitude, then that method will co- like just fuck the drum. Hmm. So it's very temperamental in like what you use it on, but it's a good way to like boost all of your drums to without having to like EQ the shit out of it. Because like sometimes EQing is good, 
But sometimes you want the full fidelity of that right, that, right. that sound, you mm-hmm. know. So sometimes like EQing a little bit, but then boosting with the utility and then making sure that it's not like clipping or anything like that is pretty cool. It's kind of hard. Wait, I don't have you're my... pushing it into the master limiting. Uh, everything. Like the summing. The, the template is all routed into a Pro L, but the individual channel itself, like say yeah. this is one yeah. channel and your snares on that. You would turn that channel on negative twelve, but then boost it twelve on the utility. But then it's kind of nice because <laughs> I don't know what happens, but when you do it that way, you all of a sudden have all this headroom on the channel. So all of a sudden the snare is really loud, and then if you want to just like by the end of your project, you can just turn up the channel to wherever you want. Right. You don't right. have to do like all the mess of it like also, EQing and all that stuff. Also it's just de- turn it up. It depends on what the glue compressor settings are at the very end of that. That as well. So mm. and that's. That's why it's kind of like a hard question to answer because it's it's all dependent on like what you're trying to achieve. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Like if you want that like super loud fucking dance beat like neuro like that's very popular. Um, you would boost the shit out of all that stuff. But if you're trying to make like a lo-fi track, you're not gonna boost that stuff at all. Like, right, yeah, right. Whatsoever. Everything in your lo-fi track is really chill, and then your <laughs> snare is just, just fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> Or just every single thing is bricked. Every you know, time, yeah. just, Dude, hi-fi, lo-fi? Just quiet. You just turn the volume down, and it's like... Just, <laughs> oh. and then just to, riding. To finish the drum tangent, the last thing I do, too, is obviously all my drums are grouped into one channel, and so, like, everything is in a group. Uh, on that channel, like, the group itself, like, all of the drums, I always like uh, Isotope's Ozone. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but Ozone has like a really nice stereo option. Is that their mastering one? Yeah, it's called. Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. Ozone works something. Okay. But I turn off the compressor and I turn off the saturation and I turn off the limiter on it because you can you can t- toggle those things on and off. Mm. But Ozone for some reason has a really nice stereo option. Like you can give things a right, little bit they're, of stereo. They're Imagizer or whatever the fuck it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's like the lascivious option and all that stuff. Yeah. I usually have that as a preset on my drums, and I'll turn the ozone just like a little bit of stereo, and then it gives your drums like a little bit more depth instead of it all just being mono. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a lot of debate having your. I feel like that's like a debacle of people yeah. having your drums in mono or stereo. Like, I like I like a room on my drums same. all day long. Yeah. Same. Oh. Yeah, same. Okay. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. That but, brings your drums up like massively. But I would say though, at the end of all that, after I do like the kick and the snare, hi hats, all this shit, I was kind of tying on the ozone. Kind of helps spread it out a little bit. So then, once you're mm. done doing the drums, I don't know. Obviously, I can't speak for how people like to make their music. I personally always start with the drums. That always is my start point. Um, Same. I, I tend, yeah, I tend to do that too. I know I've heard, seen Mr. Bill talk about how that's like. His biggest weakness was starting with drums only, and so he started making music like with the synth instead or other things, and mm. then building drums around it. But mm-hmm. me personally, I've always liked starting with because I don't know. I feel like I get the most inspiration to what I want to do once I have a beat going. Right, mm-hmm. it lets me know where the riff is, or like yeah, exactly. I can sit there and I can I can literally riff on I, top of the drums. I like using the drums as like the metronome. Right. Yeah, the, same. The same. drum, the drums are like the metronome for me instead Even, of actually using the metronome. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. that's just me personally. Um, but yeah. But, Even if it's like super simple, your drum pattern sure. is just like kick hat snare hat snare hat kick. Like you let the kicks float because you're undecided, but you just right, have like a right. basic foundation. I, I, I like that. I also used to make all my drums in samples in like audio, but I steered away from that because it came to a point where like, uh, fuck, if I want to change the snare, mm. it is kind of a pain in the ass at least in ableton specifically like if you want to change the snare you can't just like change it you have to change every sample or unless you hot swap it then that works but i wouldn't say that most people make music are like using hot swap to like their fullest ability yeah, yeah. yeah and they don't even learn about it till like eight and years hot, later and, or whatever and even hot swapping is like kind of a confusing process because it doesn't like tell you how to do it it just like yeah you do hot swap and then like ableton like shuts off like three seconds and it's like what do you want to do and it's like i what like, yeah I, I think the first time i tried to use it it crashed and so i was like let's not do that ever again <laughs> like, so that shit so if you make I'm good so if you make like all your drums and audio <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that because it's like audio is yeah, awesome. it's fine but like yeah if you want to like 
if you like the song and you're like, fuck, I, I wish, I want to know what this sounds like with a different snare, it would be in MIDI. Because then, also, yeah. Cursa had a whole thing. He had like a bunch of black box, uh, like teaching lessons where he did. And one mm, of the, mm-hmm. I agreed with everything, but the thing where he was like, I only work in audio. Like, I don't use audio or I don't really use MIDI because it's like mm. likely to crash and da da da. And I followed that yeah, advice. Yeah, it's an Ableton. Like, yeah, I followed that advice mm-hmm. for like a year and then I came to find out like, kind of bullshit like that's not true yeah yeah all. i mean i'll like, that's use just a preference yeah mm. t- totally and i'll usually end up in audio for like the final stages of most things yeah. but i'll usually start in midi for that exact kind of thing like i want one i want to be able to duplicate it put a new synth on there and immediately making like a new patch with the yep. exact same note there and everything or like a new snare just duplicate it down throw in a new snare tried a bunch of times the hi-hats too like it's just easier to start in midi but I'll usually end up with a bunch of shit in audio. Plus, it's nice when you do, like, also tying the drums. When I layer my snares, it's really nice. To, so the things I use, uh, do you guys know what Impulse is in Ableton? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but Impulse is specific. It's a, what would you call it? Uh, I would say it's a MIDI tool. It's basically just a module in Ableton. It's Oh, it's an instrument rack. It's an instrument mm, rack. Okay, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know I'm, about this. So Impulse is specifically for drums. Like oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can use it for whatever the fuck you want. It's all trial and error. Sure. But it's basically on the Ableton website. It's, it's kind of like drums. a drum machine almost. Kind of. It's like, think of a drum pad, but instead of like it giving you the options of all where you can put the samples, it's only eight or nine. Drum right? rack? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, instead, yeah. So it's like drum rack, but it's instead of like the whole grid, grid, it's only a set amount and it's like yeah. in a layer. Mm. But there's some weird options on there. Like you can control the velocity. Like there's super precise precision over velocity. There's like, right. You it's can almost the like time scaling. it's like an old school drum machine. Like a se- yeah. Sequencer of something. Yeah. Almost. Right. Right. Exactly. And there's a bunch of parameters on there. So like, say you have. Say you're limited to like what you're using. Say maybe you only have like a couple hi hat samples. I don't imagine a world where people only have a couple samples. Yeah, at their not disposal. anymore. But um, but impulse is cool that you can put in a bunch of like percussion and like hi hats, and then you can make what would technically be a closed hi hat into an open hi hat with just the parameters because there's time scaling and all that right, stuff. Right, and that it affects automated. them all. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's nice too. It puts it in a MIDI layer where you can you know, pick like, okay, I like this high hat rhythm. Uh, I don't like that. Click highlight, move up. Mm-hmm. And, then, and now it's the next hi hat. And now yep. you have a new rhythm. Cause you put in the samples in there. Mm-hmm. So it's like drum rack, but you're, li- you can only put nine samples at a time. In right. There, but to, or 10, I think, or 12. It's a little bit faster than drum rack. Cause instead of, you know, affecting the decay on the s- sampler on just one of the pads and then right clicking and copy to all the yeah, it's s- already, s- it's, siblings it's all copied yeah, the whole al- time and it's already there too and mm-hmm. what's sick is each sample you click on its own personal uh parameters pop up so like if you want that hi-hat to be a specific velocity instead of doing the i know there's the under the grid like in ableton 11 12 where you can change like the the randomness the velocity all that you can adjust it you can just set it in that parameter without having to go through every hi hat and be like oh yeah setting the adjustment to be this or the volume yeah because you can set the volumes to make it sound like a more realistic hi hat pattern but impulse is just handy where you can just like do it all there in the parameter it's pretty handy is that a twelve thing no it's, no, it's, it's been around forever no it's really it, no it's, yeah, it's, it's just old. it's just a regular instrument rack and it, crazy yeah okay yep. a lot of people don't know about it or use it <laughs> i've but, never even heard about it or dude, if i have i was just like i, I don't know I don't, yeah uh, so <laughs> yeah, I, I highly impulse. recommend impulse for like percussion and hi-hats um i i wouldn't recommend using it for like uh melodies or anything like that but or, at the yeah. same time, <laughs> if someone's smart enough to and creative enough to like break that boundary, then props to you. Mm, I haven't sure, figured mm-hmm, it out sure. yet, but it's absolutely there if you wanted to. You can use it for kicks and snares if you wanted to too. But drum rack, so right, yeah, it's yeah, it's better for just a small scale kind of workspace. And it's sick too. You can uh, the time scaling on there is crazy because you'll get like a, but then if you turn the time up, be like. And that's like what it'll kind of sound like. Mm-hmm. It floats everything in a good way. Yeah, it'll make yeah. it'll like stretch the sample without you having to like go into sampler and like Put stretch a, it and all a that. A random stuff. modulator nice. on that little knob right there. Oh yeah, and then you can get like 
like you get a lot of weird oh, effects. Oh yeah, I, I love Impulse that you cool. shaker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. shaker vibes. You can I, make a shaker out of a hi hat in Impulse specifically. It's very odd. It's a very hmm. odd instrument rack. Hmm. But highly recommended for. Fuck yeah, I'm totally percussion. gonna play with that. Yeah, it's really cool. I I didn't use it for a long time, and then one day I just kind of started fucking with it, and I was like, oh, this is like oh, perfect yeah? for hi hats. Like perfect for hi hats. Nice. Let's go. I'm I'm definitely uh I love that you brought that up because literally the past like two or three weeks I've been trying to use MIDI more for percussion because mm. I'm I'm an audio boy like Cursa where I just fucking manually do it all like that and if I ever want to switch a sample it's a nightmare. Well, in hi hats it's nice. The impulse is nice too because one MIDI and two like especially something with fast rhythmic. Uh, notes and like a lot of information happening mm. impulse is like perfect for that because you can just click in the mini notes and then you can change the gridding like oh if you want something like in a different signature change mm-hmm. that it, it mm-hmm. makes it very accessible to do those things for like what you want to do whereas like if you did in drum rack or an audio you have to set every single sample into place you have to set every mm-hmm. parameter whereas impulse just does it for you right yeah. it makes it very it makes ableton a little more user friendly when it comes to stuff like that right mm-hmm. you just have a smaller uh, sample set. Basically. But granted, it's just a preference. Like that's just my preference. I've worked in audio hi hats. No, dude, that's forever. fact. Like I've I've made hi hat <laughs> rhythms from audio and spent like twenty hours. Same. But then I started using Impulse, and now I can make a hi hat rhythm in like thirty minutes. Yeah. yeah, and it's all about like time too. Like uh, the less time I can spend making something complicated, the better sp- the result I feel like I'm yeah, getting. Totally. Yeah. I'm utilizing my time better. Especially hi hats. Especially because I work nine mm-hmm. hours a day. So like if I can do something really Oh quickly, you have nine hour shifts? Every day. Whew. That's why I'm not very Godspeed. Yeah. Real man. That's yeah, yeah. Working in the car industry man. It's brutal. Oh. That's why I don't like collab with a lot of people or like go to a lot of stuff because it's like start work at seven o'clock in the morning and I get off at I don't get home until like five thirty. So that sure. entire day, and then I get home, and I'm very limited in like what I can do before I have to like go to bed at like ten yeah, o'clock, right? 11 o'clock. And you're just drained mentally because you just had a nine hour shift. So you're like, okay, I'll try for a sec, but you're just you're really yeah, not no quite kidding. there. So oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's not even including the work. It's like get off work, you know, talk to my girlfriend. I'll visit with my, oh sure, visit sure. With my roommates. Even you know, just the get... drive back takes like I don't I don't know how far you work, but like fifteen minutes to an hour depending whatever oh, like, dude, I, I drive 30 minutes to work every 30 day. minutes okay so yeah it's like an hour. so there and back that's so, an, so another I, hour so of yeah, the like day a, so yeah another hour of the day is just commuting Ugh. but uh yeah and then like if you want to like get the other things like i'm trying to be healthier with eating not eating out and then that sucks because mm-hmm. it's like get home and then i'm like oh i have to cook dinner and that's like an hour mm-hmm. to yep. eat and everything i'm not just gonna door dash some bullshit like... which i would prefer if i could do that all the time yeah. if i had fuck you money i would door dash <laughs> every goddamn day yeah i would just I hire a cooking. chef I actually oh that's like, what you do with fuck get you that money shit yeah. ready oh, yeah. when I'm home yeah, yeah. If, I, if I had fuck you money I would DoorDash whatever I wanted and it would just be ready to get home and then I could do my thing but it just shift I know dash. well if you had fuck you money you would be working a job that's true I wouldn't be working a job I would make music nine hours a day instead that's right yep. Yep. then the making of the food becomes a joy yes so yeah. before we get into the TikTok I want to say one more thing about the drums Sure. Have you seen? Have nope. any of you guys seen? Oh, fuck my bad. No, okay, straight to the pods or TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Virtual Right has recently been getting into like making a- Ableton a generative kind of thing with samples and stuff. It's almost like he should oh, that's use like the. Um, mm. Actually, no. I have a couple. Well, not a couple. I have a buddy. He doesn't make music anymore, but he used to do that with a lot of his stuff. So it's basically okay. like you, yeah. get, you get a giant drum rack and then you just fill it, fill the entire thing with like drum samples. So like say drum rack is, I think like 120 sounds you can fit in there. Yeah. And then one, watch Ableton crash. Yep. That too. Hey, Unless you have a B computer. A thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've seen people do generative stuff like that, especially for fills. Uh, Cause I know fills are kind of hard to do. Uh, one of the yeah. things I do for fills is I'll put tons of Tom samples that I like. And then uh, you just put them in a giant drum rack, and then you just kind of fill in the blanks with draw mode or with, like, the mini right, mapping. Right, right. And then you kind of get – there's a way th- – uh, I don't like cymatics. I don't like them, but they oh. had a really cool video about generative fills. I can see like, that. I don't like I think I remember them. that video. Dude, Shots every time – cu- So cu- early on, I got there. a bunch yeah, of yeah. cymatic oh, samples, and every oh, time so I'm many. searching for something, and they come up, I'm like, oh, that sounds good, but no, it's cymatics. I can't. <laughs> I, I it just feels li- gross. I don't even listen. I just move on. <laughs> 
I also there didn't purchase whatever is in my library, so I'm not using it anyway. That's fair. Yeah, I just, yeah, I use old samples for fills. So the like cool thing about plenty of old. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I totally interrupted. No, you're fine. Uh, so vir- virtual right. So you can do the thing where right. you just build a drum rack of like 120 toms, and you're like, now I can go through and like pick any tom sound I want, which is sick. That's great. But what he did, which is interesting that I've just never seen anyone do, is he found a way to generate rhythms from whatever sample you have in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, is, isn't there like so a it, module on the left now where it'll like, you can set the parameter to ha- like what okay. what kind of groove you want and it'll just say, like you, you guys generate. Know, I was going to say, you guys know about the groove control in Ableton, right? It's different yeah. than that. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but too. he's literally, so he, he set up uh, a rack basically where you can just randomize the rhythm of whatever samples you have over and over and over just by hitting that little like uh, random button on your your group. And it generates an entirely new rhythm. And it's so fascinating the way he did it. We, we can go into that on the, the, the next time you're on. Fuck yeah. But it's so sick. That is it's, cool. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought about out, that everybody. because of the, the hi-hat loops you were talking about. And it's just like, oh, if you find some whatever samples you want and you're just like, Oh, I like this sound. Like, just generate a little groove for me to start. Use my placeholder thing. Get something going. Like, it's it's yeah. crazy. Which I love. Uh, I love anything generative. Like, generative stuff is like. Uh, yeah. really it is cool. fun. It's yeah. Fuck yeah. It's not always going to get the result you want, but like, it's mm-hmm. so good for opening the door to lead to other things, though, which I really like. One It'll thing I I do constantly is just arp with a. Yep. ARP with a random modulators on like the speed, the timing, and maybe like uh, the gridding of how much it's arpeggiating. Perhaps too, maybe. the octaves, mm. perhaps like a gating kind of stuff, and just have it like changing speed and timing and and try and give me as much a different variety of rhythm mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. shit. Let's which go. is which is crazy. Kind of like m- mud pie, pie style. Yeah, which is yeah. crazy. Arpeggiator is super underrated because I feel like Fuck even yeah. though our, even though it arpeggiator really is. is very calculated. I've noticed if you use arpeggiator on like certain instrument, like sound, like for example, I've been really getting into uh, using like bass guitar rather than making like a sub. I really like like a bass guitar groove because I mm. love like listening to, like Thundercat and like a lot of artists like that. Oh, it's, shout like, very Thundercat! Funky. Shout Thundercat! Go, I I just saw Kate Trinata two weeks ago. Ah, oh, dude, I'm jealous. I'm so fucking jealous. It was insane. Oh, yeah, that's fucking. Gross. I knew it was yes. gonna be good, but he just like whoa, like I was not expecting that. He's dude. Kay Trinata is also <laughs> another one. Like that's a daily listen right there. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Let's go. Love Kay Trinata. Um, but arpeggiator is cool in the sense that, like, say you're playing a bass guitar, clarinet. Just some examples of instruments I've been like utilizing or like through uh, contact. Arpeggiator is cool because if you set a rhythm and arpeggiate it, you start. If you tune it enough and just fuck around, I don't want to say definitive like what to do, but I've just noticed like if you use arpeggiator with like real instruments you start getting like if you build like a midi pattern or audio pattern or i think arpeggio actually only works on midi but i've noticed if you play things on there and then arpeggiate it in certain timing it'll sound more organic it won't sound mm. like you're just printing uh midi onto like ableton mm. it'll actually sound like riffs it'll sound like someone's playing and just i don't know if it's just like my own preference of just hearing that but arpeggiator makes things sound like a little more organic at maybe least maybe a hint it. of like the gate coming in with the arp yeah. or like whatever yeah the something. velocities and things have you ever played have you i guess you guys can't but probability arp do you know about yes, that one yes probability arp's really cool dude i, I love probability arp i think i just found that cuz of like awesome. Reslings so, patreon yeah, or something you're talking about the you talking about I the max for live big. yeah right. exactly the one yeah. that has like and the, the bounce the purple or the purple yeah yeah that thing's really cool you have a probability of triggering like a 16th note or versus an eighth or like how often yeah that one's cool too because you can insane. you can set the probability of like the key too so you'll get yeah. like the yeah. step of like okay now it's in like this key now it'll, it'll jump to this really quick and then go back down yeah it's is super cool it's insane it blew my mind when i first found it i was like oh my god arps can be so much <clears throat> more like yeah, you can arp- inject steroids into arps especially if you put arpeggiators on bass noises you get <laughs> fucked up results with the <laughs> You, you throw your mud pie bass into the probability arp and it just writes a song. Yeah, yeah. then you just oh, yeah. get fucking crazy shit. All right, That's guys. That's literally what I do. This first TikTok I want to run to, this is the thing I was just talking about. There's something right, in Ableton, and this is one that we watched last week, um, where it like it lets you take a set of mid, mid notes. Okay, wait, play, but I have to... 
piece so bad. I've been holding it for like 15 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> it's okay, I'm I'm about to explode myself. Tiniest I'm, bladders I'm, ever, guys. Well, basically, yeah. I'll, I'll wait till he, he gets back for this. But um, it's some <laughs> kind of module on the side of Ableton 12 that, like, you put a bunch of mini notes in a cord, basically, and then you tell it some parameters, and it will, like, randomly fill them in a pattern and across the whole scale and stuff like that to kind of, like, generatively fill in some manner which is pretty neat that is pretty cool um i don't know what, what it's called but i think he like you can see what it is when when we watch this whenever austin pulls himself out of the toilet speaking of can i actually take a pee break myself yeah, go ahead go where, ahead. where is the head back through my studio yeah Thank all you. the way back to your dead end and then just keep push, turning left just go through through the studio as quickly as possible okay <laughs> um, you bastard. That's fun. Uh, so so Dave, <laughs> what's up? Um, that new autism patch. Uh, okay, I'm kidding, dude. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. All right, I want to talk about it, guys. You heard it here first. I'll tell you what, though. Um. We don't need what I've learned is turn down He's gone, P2. your master volume by 12 and then turn a tool up by 12 at the end not, of your... Not master, but the track. The track, yeah, yeah. The track volume. Yeah. Are you saying you're confused by his method on that? Or what are we talking about? Yeah, I want to know what the actual math is there. I, I, don't, know, I, don't, I was think, confused I don't about feel that like too. I'm confused. I think it does... Nothing? Nothing. Yeah. Right. That's that's why I'm confused because I'm like, what? That doesn't do anything. We got some homework to do. The only thing I maybe can see that some doing confusion happening here. Yeah, I, maybe something does happen for well, some reason, but I can't only, imagine why. The right? only thing I could see happening is you're boosting the twelve into the glue the glue compressor. So the glue compressor is clipping. Oh, so if the threshold of the glue is based off like minus twelve, is that what you're saying? Or uh, what, whatever. It's just it's a subtle play on gain staging. It's yeah, because yeah. you're throwing yeah, you're throwing tw extra twelve dB into the glue compressor, but then you're turning down your track, so it doesn't seem like it's too loud. But the glue compressor is clipping. Yeah. So in my so brain, you're just clipping. You're just clipping, yeah. And on that note, mm. you're soft clipping. Should we beat yeah. Slowmato up? Which has its pros because he lied on the pod. He didn't lie. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, We're no just, we just talked about how it works. Uh, I am curious. He did. Hey, dude. He didn't lie, dude. dude he he didn't. didn't lie. He he's, just got that new patch. He's been That's making it. music almost twice as long as me, so if he says that is a thing he heard that is different, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to yeah. experiment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, more play mad. I'm more mad at Rez Lang. Cause that dude lied. He basically he just lied. said, he here's lied. what I do. I just clip the fuck out of my snare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, I clip the fuck out of my snare, too. He's yeah. like, add a saturator, drive it 10 and then it'll yep. sound great. And then Do put, it on every channel. Put a vocoder on the master. Vocoder the master. And then saturate that plus 10. Then add a black box. You know. Of like, course. But the, the res laying sound. The mid-side black box. Obviously. I just put. The, yeah. The, I put the mid -side way black box. too many effects on basically almost every channel. Yeah. I put. Yeah, I put least. a lot of fucking effects on all my fucking tracks. Do you? Same. I feel like I'm yeah. getting to be oh, like less and less with my effects. Yeah. Mm. I'm I, not. It just degrades my mm. shit. I, I feel like so Same. I try and reduce yeah. the amount of effects as much as possible. Besides, like, unless I'm trying to make like a mud pie. Synths, yeah. yeah. Like, if it's a bass sound, then it's whatever. Yeah. Or if I'm like resampling a pad a bunch of times, I mean, technically, there's a bunch of effects that happen, but by the time it's to its final state, it's really just like a sampler and a clipper, kind of. Mm hmm. And, and not did. really even a clipper, more yes, of a comp. Thank you. Com 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 Cum. A cum. Cum. compressor. All right, guys. Let's boop, boop, boop. Energy coming. That's right. We're talking compressor. Energy here. coming. Oh my god! I almost sent this one. Okay, so you, so you Let's see what go. he's so you see the thing that he 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 does this with. Here's a cool trick to give a super unique your hi hats. Create a one bar MIDI clip and draw in four sixteen notes. One to sharp one. Duplicate the notes Yay. so that you have one bar right. filled with these blocks of sixteenth notes. Click inside the piano roll to deselect the notes and open the MIDI. That 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 thing, the MIDI tr 
Ah, oh, that's some Ableton 12 shit right there. Right. You I didn't even know. Damn, that that's cool. Oh wait, mine is set up different. Got a built-in arpeggiator. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. dude. All their new built-in generative yeah. shit is honestly one, insane. To zero and wait to one six. Now highlight all the notes. Make sure. Scale Are you on eleven? I'm on eleven still, but I'm about to get twelve once I once I pay off all the house stuff I just bought. That's cool. I've seen some cool shit with people making really nice like drums using a lot of these new settings and, and chords. They have a chord generator which is sick. And simpler to the left. Oh, that's cool. You can shorten the the length of the splits. Is Damn, this Don cool. Kong? That little face. German little German guy? I don't know. What's up, Don Kong? But that that little thing on the l l left there is pretty cool. Dude, I'm so happy you sent that because I almost sent that to you today as nice. the clip I wanted for yeah, the podcast. No, so. we, we played that last week. Did we? Oh, I wasn't there. Okay. Yeah, that's why. We sure did. Yeah, we killed you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we murdered you. Uh, cool. Murdered so me. you will start. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pause it, pause it. This way. Uh, do my other one first. <laughs> I'm sorry. I knew this would happen. I then you can say something. <laughs> then be like, play this one first. Oh, I didn't know which one it was. So this is some rain. We can also, and they're both you, like a minute and a half. I'm sorry. You love talking in the middle of these fucking TikToks, dude. I'm trying to save us time. They're both like a minute and a half. We only need like 30 seconds of each. A minute if and a half not, not that long. Okay. You look in the frequency analyzer. Oh, but it's also every frequency playing at once, and what that means is we can bring out certain little resonances, which sounds kind of nice. And we can also create little chords like that. And then what we've done is we put a few different chords into the same rack. This dude, this dude is fucking dripped so out. Far. I know. Yeah, he is. Look at that jacket. Dude's got the fucking geographical topography map of. <laughs> Asia on his <laughs> fucking jacket sleeve, dude. That's sick. That just for a bit extra is that Mount Everest vibes? on his shoulder? <laughs> yeah, it is. And he can bend in between Let's two go. different notes. Map of the oh, ocean floor. Reverb to that. Uh, I've been. I need to buy Valhalla VSTs. Is that is something I've been sleeping on for many years on. now. Dude, they're great. They're so good. So I would Ooh. do something like this, and I've done things like this, but I only tune one note, like a C, mm. and then I'll bounce it. And then oh, I'll put it in a sampler, okay. and then you can just play every note. That's all, a good all move. All at once. That's a good move. Yeah. So you, so, you, so you don't have to figure out any more nodes. You just play them on top of each other. So that's why I sent the second video. But there is an interesting he's doing with this one, which I will talk about after the second video. <laughs> he's got a plan that he didn't share with the group. Yeah, beforehand. you got to be surprised. Also, his song is sick that he made. It's actually pretty sick. Oh yeah. Oh. Liquid. Yeah. Walking down yes. the street. Britain. But I've it, got myself a bagel. It's like and if some Liquid coffee. was jumping. About up. to get tea and biscuits at not about yeah. to get tea and biscuits and then hit Nando's in the afternoon, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Biscuits. Tea. <laughs> or sorry, crumpet. 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 Crumpets. <laughs> okay. So crumpet now and we'll tea. go to this one. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Cool. So you will start. All of your songs in this way from now on <laughs> and it will become your entire personality um, once Wait you realize that any sound into a cone Sorry. filter as you fade it. in the resonance. <laughs> you can play musical notes. Oh, he's using vital. Okay. And he's using a comb. Instead of just yeah. programming it individually. Yeah, it's a key it's a key it's a key track. And it's key tracked. Oh it is the most glorious sound on planet Earth. You could start it with just the noise. I do like this. And, like, this is sick. Automate the resonance to increase. <laughs> Dude, if they got a lisp in the tutorial, you know it's going to be some banger shit. Right, <laughs> like, right. actually, though. Right. Not even disrespecting, but if they have a lisp while they're tutorialing, 100%. you in the video, you're going to learn work. some fucked up shit. Dude, yeah. you got the patch early. Damn. <laughs> oh, early. No. Damn, this dude's making, like... Beta tester, dude. 
dude's making like floating points sound type synths in this shit. It is sick. Imagine it is sick. the possibilities. Oh, I'm imagining the possibilities, dude. <laughs> Anything. I'm this imagining your hand, not in the view. By the way. I know this. this for can read do that. I own this shit. <laughs> this guy's Damn you. As fuck, I love it. So what's cool what about the different methods he did? So the first guy's is kind of just like <laughs> tedious and annoying to program because right. he programmed individual chords. Like, he fucking placed it based off of, you know, all the bullshit. Yeah. But what's cool about the first guy's process is he was doing interesting things like sevenths or an octave up with his chord or some sort of, like, additional harmonics in his chord. Or not even harmonic, like, notes, I guess. Okay. And that dude, you're, you're kind of just stuck with the comb filter. Like, okay. all of just, like, it's like creating a saw. Almost. Unless right. you modify the comb filter. Unless. With oh, things. shit. Speaking, oh, which, yeah, I mean, you could easy, easily use velocity for something like that. Which, speaking right. of or comb. Morph it. Speaking mm. of comb filtering, though, do you guys know what shade is? Yes. BST? Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Comb filtering on shade is like. Crazy. I use it in pretty much every tune. Same. Like, the, really, the I, phasers I, on shade. I'll, oh. I'll even like make music with the intention of like, okay. I'm not going to use the shade comb filtering <laughs> on anything. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, so and then like 30 minutes later, I'm like, this is so cool. Why did I say I wasn't going to use this? Yeah, like, the yeah, fuck? Yeah. yeah, I used to use shade it a lot. I haven't used it fucked. in a minute. Shade is... It's good. It's, but it's it, really good. But it can also be not good, because it has a really aggressive limiter on it that kind of fucking will shit on your sounds, depending sure. on how you use it. So that's the only gripe I have with it. Is the built-in limiter? You just is... gotta turn the volume down before you hit it. That yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's, That's all. You... All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Paying paying attention to your Things volume I wish I knew. coming into shit is like <laughs> what is that photo? Everything. Golf. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf. Golf. Why you look like that, Tyler? Golf wine. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, gain staging. Change staging indeed. Shade. Things I wish I knew when I started making beats that actually made a difference. <laughs> Record sounds in real life to get unique results. Then add effects. Well, no shit. <laughs> Silence is an instrument. It allows vocals to have a big impact. Have you guys ever seen the movie Pootie Tang? You can use volume oh, automation no. to create some cool effects. I've, I've heard it referenced. I've never seen it. Use There's a bit in that movie where... The main character makes a song, but it's just silence. But he's Let's the go. character's so cool. They're like, he don't need no music, no lyrics, it's no just melodies. That good. He's just pooty tang. And then like, there's a whole montage of people listening to silence, and they're just like, ah! it's so this funny. This is the hottest so shit. Whenever people are like saying like silence is an instrument, I just think of that one scene in it's that funny. movie because I'm just like, it. It's true. It silence really is a very yeah. powerful too. Yeah. It's just mm. funny. It could yeah. be a whole song. Amazing. Yeah. Where do we? Can you Wait, we do we? some cool effects. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Use ambient sounds to fill up space in your melodies. Without ambience? With ambience. Add pitch slice to your melodies. Oh. Now that's really cool, yeah, actually. That was sick. I like that. He saves the best, I like the best that one too. for last. Um, it's well, just a bunch boy. of very standard things that you should just never forget to do. Right? Exactly. Yeah, honestly, exactly. that is exactly what this video is. I really like watching. Um, this only has eleven likes. How did you find this? What the fuck? Now it's about to have twelve. Um, if you don't like Dave that, it, be <laughs> fucking upset. Dave sent it to me from popped Instagram. My, oh yeah, or, popped up on my Instagram. I or guess. Or oh, that's why it doesn't have likes. I think it was on YouTube. Actually, it was. It was, a it was short. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and then I found him. On here, I just I just say whatever you say. Jam yeah. Ju beats. Shout he out. found it in his butthole. I do found guys, it in uh, my butthole. Oh. Do you guys use a shaper box at all by oh, Cable Guys? Every day. Oh, I just got it. On I just got it. Everything. There's yeah. a there's like, a guy on Instagram. On like he makes channel. reels uh, under Cable Guys. Cable but he, Guys, yeah. But he just does a bunch of crazy tutorials on Those shaper tutorials box. Tutorials yeah. are so good. But there's but they're literally like thirty seconds, and but in that thirty seconds is just like mind melting. Yeah, knowledge we've done about shaper box. we've done a lot of those on this. Yeah. A segment. It was hard for me not to put any in here. Okay, you don't for have any. Box yeah, I usually oh, do. Oh, dude, I use Shaperbox on every yeah. Yeah. single. I use that's it on another every big, track. That's basically. another big part of my neuro bass process is fucking Shaperbox. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Filtering yeah. on Shaperbox is goaded. It's yeah. just, it's just so easy to make. Yeah. Like especially if you're trying to make like that that donk sound where it's like dun dun dun, like the Reslang, like really aggressive yeah. like perk. 
dude, yeah. Shaver Box achieves that with very minimal effort. Mm. Really? Insane. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm you, always trying to do that, and I'm like, why am I? What am I missing? The, the Shaver thing, Box is what I'm missing. Shaver Box, and also the thing that makes it donk or donk. <laughs> Fucking the quotations, but yeah, the but technical term. It's just making a really aggressive sound, but then when you put shaver box on it, filters out all the aggressiveness because you're filtering. But shaver box is like perfect for making that like dun 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 sound. Like it, I don't know, it just does it you're really just, well. You're using it kind of as a filter LFO kind of situation. Yeah, envelope, right? kind of I do. Thing. I do it a lot envelope. for that evolving sound. I use shaver box a lot for the evolving sound because you can randomize the filter. You can change it. So what would be like a like horn bass noise with a filter you can make like wubs you can make kind of donkey sounds you can make you right. can have it like, like pitch weird yeah you can Stereo do all kinds of shit yeah you can do all kinds of weird shit and share uh i will always i could talk for hours about how sick shaper box dude shaper box is Same. good to be talking we about have, it on the pod all the time oh, yeah. we have talked for hours about shaper box <laughs> it's just a really good program oh yeah oh right, i know guys, this guy speaking of ba- bass sounds <laughs> this 14 I saw this second song. tutorial is goaded. God damn Are you guys it. ready for this? 14 seconds yeah. of goatness. You know, check this out. This is how you make this. That is a lot of minimal audio right there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Tynan. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, let's out. watch this that again. Make this oh, this is Tynan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is he still on Wakan? Is he still doing stuff? I hope so. Was he on Wakan? I don't oh, yeah. know that. Oh, yeah. He's had a bunch of releases <laughs> on Wakan. No shit. Shit. Back in like the beginning of Wakan, so too. Or not the things. very beginning, but like 2019, 2020 era. A Disperser. lot of Wakan. No oh, shit. I didn't oh, yeah. know that. Yeah, he. Uh, I don't know what that is. It looks like M- uh, an, uh, uh, Imelda. Oh, that's uh, M uh, Analyzer, dude. Uh, that... It does look like Imelda Pro. I don't know what that is. Hey. It's, here. it's a massive patch. Oh, it is massive. What the That's fuck? Funny. Also, look at his Minimal EQs, audio. the two top ones. Yep, what yep. the That's fuck is happening? Well, that, that middle, well, those two top ones, that's Morph EQ. By oh, my Minimal Audio. Is that what that is? Okay. Yeah, so that, so the big one, so yeah, so if you go back, I can actually count. I don't know what that first one is, but Massive, Morph EQ, Disperser by yep, Kilohertz. Yeah. Oh, Disperser, yeah. OTT yeah. By oh, Expert. that OTT. OTT by Z- yeah, and then uh, Rift. That yeah, looks rift. like that looks like rift. Yeah, and that is two, rift. Two. Is that a third morph? Yeah, so he's yeah, using three morph EQs: disperser, uh, rift, and then I don't know what that front. One, that looks like a Melda. What is that front? Yeah, one? it looks like Melda. I don't it's, think it looks like Melda. It's too, it looks like, like a nice limiter looking. to me. It looks like a limiter to me the way it's scrolling. The UI is way too good to be Melda. Mm-hmm. And it shows you how much it's coming down right. Oh wait, right. shit! Oh, and, oh, also, he has using, Ableton processing. Might be a distortion. And he's using uh, and oh shit. Pros. There's a Pro Q3. Yeah, two Soothe. Pro Q3s. Yeah. Oh shit, he has the he has the sub fully cut. So that's why he has massive and current. He's got a separate sub. Yeah. Do you see that yeah. EQ? Yeah, man, yeah. look at that near brick wall. I know, that a boy. Right that's in the what middle I like of to see. that fucking node too, which is interesting move. Is it in the middle? Oh. I always like that. Right in the when middle. When people of it. pull it up that... and they pull it right up to the node and you're yeah. like, I will say I Ew. do that. I do that a lot with the <laughs> sub in a lot of my base prize pure pro Q3. I'll smash it into Same. like so, like, if it's E or D, I'll just, like, put it to that node, and then, like... Because I've noticed, like, when I make really big bass sounds, like, the low end will... Uh, it'll muddle out. Where, like, you'll the bass noise sound cool, but there'll be this weird rumble underneath mm-hmm, the noise. So, like, mm-hmm. cutting it like that is actually really good Head for Headroom, baby. Out. Who oh, thought yeah. we'd get so much out of this 15 I know, what the fuck? Right, right here. Like, we got the most out of that than any of them. All right, and... Save, oh, there's another? I thought that was the last. I saved the best for last. Oh, here we go. My body is ready. <laughs> God damn it! What the uh, fuck is this smash? So this part twenty-seven. Yeah. Yes, dude. There's so damn. many, and That's I have them. The all. dumb one you were talking about yes, earlier. Yes, I have them all saved. They so there'll so be a fun. new one every week, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Fifteen seconds this of glory. I respect it. Great. I wouldn't want a video like that from anybody else who doesn't look the exact way he does. Right. Right. He's perfect for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking dance. Oh my god. Well, Slamato, thanks for coming on the pod, man. Amazing. Thank you. I'm yeah. sorry I spent most of the podcast talking about drums. That's good. I, I no, saw no, that you had good. some more topics. No, we, we spread no, no, it this, out. We this is just what we did talk about. Drums. Oh, 
I'm just taking notes so that I, when I do the video on YouTube, all I got to do is be like... Is there any way to reverb our voices on the mic at all? Mm. No, we there want is. to do that. Is, One day we'll get there. We do not have that set yeah, up. I would love to be like, up. shit. And then, just right. and then you cool. pitch it down. Oh, Ooh. we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. We'll get there. I can we'll, do it. In we'll post. have a separate button for all of us <laughs> one day. I'll, I'll do it in post. Yeah, that'd be yeah. hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> We're now in a canyon. Bum, but clack, 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 clack. I'll just have us each have totally different reverbs and delays on right now. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> I fucking uh, love reverb. Hallway. And I don't care who knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's right. gonna be upset with everything you, into convolutions. Right. We're just we are now amps. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Right, guys, subscribe. Um, yeah, subscribe. Hit the f- follow button. Go follow Slamato on all the things. Slamato. Where can people find you? You're on Instagram and everywhere. SoundCloud. It's Slamato As... with two O's at the end. Uh on everything but Instagram, it's just Slamato. Oh, okay. Slamato. Okay. Tomatoes but on up. Instagram, it's got two or three O's or something. Three, o- three O's. <laughs> <laughs> three O's, man. It's got some O's. You'll uh, see it. Wait a week. It's got some O's. It's, it's wait a week. Three, three O's on Instagram. Nice. But everything else is just as is. You can find me on everything. All stream platforms. I'm trying to get better. I still have a lot of music lacking, but on certain platforms. But I'm trying to... Mm. This year will be the year where everything I've ever made will be on everything. Oh, okay. shit. Yeah. So, Everybody watch out. It's coming. The tidal wave of snail tomatoes. So much wow. Spotify I've missed. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, folks. Well, thanks for everything. We'll... Was this 180? Also, yeah. before we end, Gabber. just let you know, anyone who has tuned in, please follow these guys. They put Aww, in so honey. much work for this podcast. It's kind of insane. <laughs> Some of the most passionate people I've had the privilege of actually like coming across to. And I don't talk to a lot of people, but these guys are for real. Like, Me neither. It, Let's go, buddy. Seriously. Hell yeah. yeah seriously, yeah. Like, please follow Appreciate. the podcast for real. Yeah, hit that sub and follow button, guys. We'll see you next week. That's right. Bug tipper to come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wait Mr. Bill gets that, gets that privilege. Mr. No, we don't need to bug him. Mr. Dill. Mr. Dill Pickle. Mr. Dill Pickle. The man. Peace out. Bye.